The anarchist rejection of seizing state power has led Marxists to assert that anarchists rejected and so ignored the need for political struggle. This argument dates back to Marx and Engels themselves. Marx wrote in an 1870 letter to Paul Lafargue that Bakunin thought that the industrial working class, quote, must not occupy itself with politics and instead only organise themselves by trade unions. If they did this, then they would make the fatal error of allowing, quote, the governments, these great trade unions of the ruling classes, to do as they like. Bakunin had, according to Marx, failed to see, quote, that every class movement as a class movement is necessarily and was always a political movement. Engels similarly claimed in an 1872 letter to Louis Payot that anarchists in the First International advocated the, quote, complete abstention from all political activity and especially from all elections. Anarchists, however, did not reject political struggle in and of itself. They rejected one form of political struggle, attempting to seize state power via elections or coups, in favour of a different form of political struggle, engaging in direct action against the state. This can be seen in Bakunin's distinction between bourgeois reformist politics and the revolutionary proletarian politics of the anarchist movement. According to Bakunin, it, quote, would be the death of the proletariat to focus exclusively and solely with economic matters and ignore political questions. This is because if states enforce private property rights and thereby ensure the exploitation of workers by capitalists and landlords, it follows that, quote, the political question is inseparable from the economic question. Any significant attempt by the working classes to economically emancipate itself will be met by state violence, which serves the interests of the economic ruling classes. As a result, the working classes will be, quote, forced to consider politics, to fight it, and overcome it. The First International would for this same reason, quote, be compelled to intervene in politics so long as it is forced to struggle against the bourgeoisie. Its task as an organisation was, quote, not just some economic or simply material creative activity, but was, quote, at the same time and to the same degree, an eminently political process. The question for Bakunin was not whether we should engage in politics, but what form our political interventions should take. For Bakunin, the working classes must, like anarchists, reject, quote, bourgeois politics, whose objective is not the direct and immediate economic emancipation of workers, in favour of, quote, the politics of social revolution, which wants the abolition of the state, and fully free economic organisation of the people from bottom to top, through the path of federation. The politics of social revolution was for Bakunin, quote, exclusively negative because it consisted only in the, quote, revolutionary power of the working classes, demolishing political institutions and every power constituted by the bourgeoisie. Given this, quote, it is not true to say that we completely ignore politics. We do not ignore it, for we definitely want to destroy it. And here's the essential point separating us from political parties and bourgeois radical socialists. Their politics consists in making use of, reforming and transforming the politics of the state, whereas our politics, the only kind we admit, is the total abolition of the state and of the politics, which is its necessary manifestation. Bakunin's distinction between bourgeois politics and revolutionary anarchist politics was repeated by later anarchists. In 1897, Malatesta remarked that, quote, Who has outdone us in arguing that the battle against capitalism has to be harnessed to the fight against the state, meaning political struggle? There is a school of thought these days in which political struggle means achieving public office through elections. But logic forces other methods of struggle upon those seeking to do away with government rather than capture it. For Malatesta, like Bakunin before him, economic struggles would be transformed into political struggles because, quote, workers who want to free themselves, or even only to effectively improve their conditions, will be faced with the need to defend themselves from the government, which uses brute force to enforce private property rights 
and defend the interests of the economic ruling classes. As a result of this, workers will be forced to move from, quote, the economic struggle to the political struggle, that is, to the struggle against government, and to therefore, quote, oppose the rifle and guns which defend property with the more effective means that the people will be able to find to defeat force by force. Kropotkin, in contrast to Bakunin, held that politics was not inherently state-centric, but would continue to exist, albeit in a very different form, after the abolition of the state. He argued that, quote, new forms of economical life will require also new forms of political life, and these new forms cannot be a reinforcement of the power of the state by giving up in its hands the production and distribution of wealth and its exchange. These new forms of political life must instead be, quote, created by the workers themselves, in their unions, their federations, completely outside the state. Given this, quote, the political aspect of a social revolution ought to be the construction of the free, independent communist commune. Given the above, it's clear that Marx and Engels misrepresented what anarchists think. Anarchists did not reject or ignore the need for political struggle. They merely disagreed with Marx and Engels on how to go about doing political struggle. If you like this video, please follow me on Twitter and support me on Patreon to help fund my PhD. What you just heard was from my PhD, which is an overview of what anarchists thought about revolutionary strategy in Europe and North America between 1860 and 1940. Thanks so much to everyone who has and continues to support me on Patreon. I'm forever indebted to you. Have a nice day, everyone.